So unless you have been living under a rock for the past 15 years, you have probably heard of this guy called Naruto. In case you haven't, I'm just going to give a quick summary so that I don't waste your time. Naruto is a boy who grew up in a village with aspirations to be the village leader, also known as the Hokage. And within him is trapped a Nine Tails, also known as the QB, which gives him power when he taps onto it. Now initially, the QB and him didn't get along, but after being cooperative and becoming friends eventually, spoiler, he was able to tap onto its power more effectively and increase his abilities by 100 fold. So why do I share Naruto and what does it have to do with the power of when? Within you, there's also a primal energy and a nine tails fox, if you will. There's an energy source which, unless you learn to cooperate with it, and unless you learn when you should do certain things, you're gonna be limited by your energy. And if you don't have five minutes to watch this video, you're gonna be spending the rest of your life wondering, why do you feel tired at one o'clock? Why am I feeling so tired after nine hours of sleep? Why is it that when I socialize at a certain time, I feel tired? So I'm just gonna jump straight into it and kind of give you a brief summary. So what we have inside of us is actually a primal preference for when we should wake up, when we should eat, and when we should sleep. Part of that is called your circadian rhythm, which tells you when you should wake up and when you should sleep. It's basically just your internal clock. Like, oh, 9 o'clock, I'm getting sleepy. Oh, 7 a.m., I'm getting more awake. And so chronotypes basically talk about preferences for when you should exercise, when you should socialize, and when you should smash the like button, which is actually now. No, but seriously, I'm just going to be covering those few things. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Duncan, and in this episode of Book Club, which is something I'm just starting, I'm going to be covering the power of when and talking about chronotypes. This is obviously not the book. I actually don't own the book physically, but I have listened to the audiobook. So if you do want to grab a free copy of the audiobook, click the link below. Yeah, I'm not sponsored, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, there's an audiobook online, you just go check it out, and it's a fantastic read. So I'll be covering what a chronotype is, what are the different types of chronotypes, what are their daily schedules, what are my personal experience, and any final thoughts that I might have. So firstly, what the heck is a chronotype? By definition, a chronotype is a behavioral manifestation of underlying circadian rhythms of myriad processes. A person's chronotype is the propensity for the individual to sleep at a particular time during a 24-hour period. So what on earth does that mean? Let's break it down in simpler terms. So like I mentioned earlier, circadian rhythm is basically your body's internal clock. When the sun rises and the rays of light start coming in, your body wakes up. And when it starts to disappear, when the sun goes down, then your body starts to feel tired and melatonin builds up and you feel sleepy. Anyway, it's the reason why you get jet lag when you go overseas because your body's internal clock has not adjusted to that time zone of when the sun rises and when the sun sets. So it might think at like, oh, 3 a.m., the sun should be rising now and it wakes you up. But in actual fact, no, in whatever country you're in, that's it's 3 a.m but it's 7 a.m. at your original location. So a chronotype actually goes into more details of the physical aspects of things. Uh, basically, when to do focus worked, when she socialized, when she smashed the like button, which is now. So anyway, let's talk about the four different types, okay? There are dolphins, there are bears, there are lions, and there are wolves. And you can find out yours at thepowerofwhen.com. If you have two minutes, just go there, take it, and then come back to the video. It'll make so much more sense once you find out your type. Go do that now. It'll take two minutes. Alright, done? Okay, great. No, really, go and do it if you haven't, please. Okay, let's go on. So let's talk about their personalities. Dolphins are usually the light sleepers and are often diagnosed with insomnia. They usually don't feel very well rested even after getting a long night of sleep. Lions are usually the early risers, so they wake up feeling a lot of energy, feeling very energetic and wanting to chase the day. And that means that usually by the evening times, they are exhausted and that makes socializing a big challenge for them. Bears make up 50% of the population and this follows the time of sunrise and sunset. And usually bears, we need a full eight hours of sleep to feel very well rested. And lastly, we have the wolves, which are also known as the night owls. They struggle to wake up early and they have the most energy in the evenings, making them the best party animal. I just want to point out that the names used here are closely linked with mammals that have the same kind of behavioral patterns that we do, at least for the specific types. But of course, this is not a full representation. So why do we have chronotypes in the first place? It makes perfect sense. Think about our ancestors. How did they survive? Everyone would sleep together in a colony or wherever. And if you had different chronotypes, that basically meant you had different guard duties in that sense. So the lions would sleep first, then the bears and dolphins next, and then wolves by 2 a.m. when they feel actually tired, the lions will be rising around like 4 or 5 a.m., which is very close to the time that they can swap duties in that sense. Lah. And for dolphins, if someone was nearby, and since they are very light sleepers, they would be able to wake up and then alert the group as well as, oh, there's a predator here. So it actually makes perfect sense from a survival standpoint why we have different chronotypes. Sadly for the bears, they, they're just sleeping in the whole time, so we're not the most helpful. Now that we know the different types, let's look at the schedules of each individual. You can probably find this all online, so I'm going to give a quick summary in case you are not bothered. So dolphins should wake up at 6.30 a.m., exercise, have breakfast at 7.30 a.m., have lunch at 12 p.m., have dinner at 6.30 to 8 p.m., and then start winding down around 10.30 p.m., 
so they can sleep by 11.30 p.m. Lions should wake up at 5.30 a.m. and have breakfast. Then they should eat lunch around 12 p.m. They should exercise at 5 p.m., eat dinner at 6, and turn off all screens by 10 p.m. so that they can go to bed by 10.30. Bears should wake up at 7 a.m., do light exercise, eat breakfast around 7.30 a.m., eat lunch at 12 p.m., and have a 20-minute walk prior your lunch and after your lunch as well. Then they should have a nap around 2 p.m., they exercise at 6 p.m., and then they have dinner at 7.30 p.m. before they turn all screens off at 10 p.m. so they can go to sleep by 11. Lastly, for wolves, you should wake up at 7.30 a.m., eat breakfast, take a walk, and have lunch at 1 p.m. You should exercise at 6 p.m., eat dinner at 8 p.m., and then turn off all screens by 11 p.m. so you can sleep at 12 a.m. So the book actually goes into more details of specific things you should be doing. I'm just going to leave this here as a very rough guide so that you can start following it and you won't be too overwhelmed. So if you've taken the test, you actually realize there's a video at the end of the screen. Watch the video after you have finished this video because I feel like I can give you some tips and my own personal thoughts as well, whether it works and what doesn't work as well. So my personal experience, honestly, has been pretty good. In the past, I used to sleep for about 8 to 9 hours. During COVID period, I could sleep more and I did that. And I, even after 9 hours, I would feel great. But 9 hours is a long time to be asleep and it's not very practical once I start work. So nowadays, even though I only sleep for 7 and a half hours, I feel great in the morning. I don't feel tired. Especially if you know anything about sleep, there's REM stages. If you wake up towards the end of stage 4, which is the end of your sleep cycle, you won't feel as groggy compared to when you're waking up in the middle of your sleep cycle. So my schedule, what does it look like? So if you're a bear, which should be 50% of you, then this is going to be helpful because I'm going to be a bit more specific. So I wake up at 7.30 a.m., I hydrate, and then I get a short minute, I get a short four-minute Tabata workout. Doing four minutes of Tabata is enough to kickstart your system and get rid of all the melatonin and kind of wash out your system and awake everything, as well as it helps to start the fat burning process. So he says, so after I wash up, I usually have a high protein breakfast. So eggs or oatmeal with peanut butter, anything that's really high in protein will be highly encouraged because you don't want to eat too much heavy carbs. If not, you'd be feeling sleepy early on in the day. After that, I have my morning routine of reading, prayer, planning my day. I have to remember to stay away from my phone because I can get really distracted if I don't put my phone away. I have lunch around 12 and depending on my appetite, I'll eat earlier or later. I've tried doing the walks before and this is what I realized. I feel more energetic, definitely, but I found that the benefits aren't really that significant. I do feel better, but to go out and walk, I'm lazy, so I rather just feel a bit tired and then take a nap at 2 p.m. and then feel refreshed after that. So yeah, taking a nap, I do realize that 20 minute naps around 2 p.m. really do energize me and it's not something I've done because I hate sleeping, but I'm starting to love it because I appreciate what it does for me mentally as well as physically. I have dinner around 7 p.m. and that allows me not to snack as much throughout the night because if you follow my lifestyle, usually around 7 plus is after dinner and when I will start gaming, and when you game, snacks become the most tempting thing. Especially if you had an early dinner, you're gonna feel hungry around like 8, 9 p.m. So eating later has definitely helped curb my hunger. Usually around 9 to 10 p.m., I realize that I don't need to turn off my screens because I have a blue light filter. F.Lux is one of the websites that basically around 7 p.m., it will start turning on the yellow light and turning off the blue light. It flows very naturally. I usually try to stop gaming by 10 p.m. so as to do a bit of reflection before I sleep. But the past few days, I'm not gonna lie, I've been sleeping around 11.30 because I stop at 11. <laughs> And then I'll do my reflection. So the final tip if you're struggling to sleep is that by watching the show right before you sleep, it really takes your mind off what you have to do tomorrow, what you've done today. So I'll watch the show after I reflect and yeah, I'll just be focused on like, oh, this character and I won't be thinking about any problems that I might have. So it winds me down. It might not work for you, but remember to turn on the yellow filter if you do decide to try it. Final thoughts. Um, if you're like me, you will want to be a lion because the lion wakes up early and usually these people are go-getters, you know, wake up early, do some work and by the end of the day, they can sleep early and not really waste time like drinking or gaming. And ideally, I would want that. But actually, bears are one of the best chronotypes to be because like I said, 50% of the population follow our schedule. So that means that our schedules are all based around our chronotype when you socialize when you eat when you sleep it is all accustomed to what we are used to so if you want to change your trait it is possible but it's difficult it's not gonna be easy and you're much better off sticking to your own chronotype schedule because that's just how your body works okay so don't try to fight it you can try but Michael Bruce Dr. Michael Bruce has said that it is very difficult and it takes a few months so Try it if you want. Yeah, lastly, some traits can actually afford to sleep less. So if you're a dolphin, right, you would generally get the same amount of rest that a bear does when you get less sleep. So a dolphin, for example, can get six hours of sleep and feel the same amount of rest that 
a bear may have at like seven and a half hours of sleep. Part of it is because, okay, their sleep cycles happen slightly faster, but another part of it is just because it doesn't do much for you. So you probably just have to stick to six hours. The important thing here is you need to be very consistent with your sleeping times. You cannot be sleeping at 11 one day, 12 the next day, 1 a.m. the following day, and then maybe like 9 p.m the next day because you slept late the other night. So you really have to stick to your sleep times and wake up times for this to really be effective. Yeah, again, for more details, please go check out the audiobook or you can purchase the book. That's kind of it. So if you have any questions, please leave it down. I would love to answer, but a lot of the things can actually be found online. And if you just search Dr. Michael Bruce and find some of his interviews and podcasts, especially if you check out Impact Theory and his interview with Dr. Michael Bruce, he'll talk more a lot about sleep and how you can get better sleep versus chronotypes. You can check out his TED Talk for his chronotype and you can check out. Just go to YouTube and type it in. I'm sure you'll find something. So that's kind of it. Consider buying his book because it's fantastic. And see you next time when you feel more rested. And do remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you do want to hear more of what I have to say because I am very interested in these kind of things. How do you optimize your day? How do you get more work done? How do you study harder or faster or anything to improve your life? That's really what I'm about and I would love to have you follow me on this journey as well. So see you on the next video. Take care.